Hello, welcome to Blueprints. I'm Bodine Sanders. I'm your producer and host. I created Blueprints to focus on the positive DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion model and foundation. I and we invite leaders from various industries to share their knowledge, their life experiences with you, the viewers and mine. So let's get started. Allow me to introduce my guest today, Reverend Dr. Stanley G. Smith, PE, presiding elder of the historic Philadelphia Mother District, which would be the AME Church. Welcome. Thank you. Um, thanks for being my guest today. Mm -hmm. And let's just have a conversation. All right. Let's just have a conversation. Um, we're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. We understand that there's a lot of pushback regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion. So as a leader, as a spiritual leader, give me your blueprint on diversity, equity, and inclusion from a positive perspective. Mm -hmm. Bodine, when I, I think about that, first of all, I have to think about what shaped me as a person, mm -hmm. uh, how I grew up, I think uh, has a lot to do with uh, my perspective on that today. Uh, so if you don't mind, let me just talk a little bit about that and then we'll, we'll slide Absolutely. into the, the diversity. First of all, I grew up in North Philadelphia, okay. uh, predominantly uh, black neighborhood, uh, okay really only uh, people uh, outside of my race that I saw was maybe in a store mm -hmm. or a teacher or, or TV. Mm -hmm. uh, that was it. Uh, up until about junior high, things shifted a little bit because my family moved from North Philadelphia to a section called Mount Erie, which mm -hmm. is near Chestnut Hill. Mm -hmm. for for some of your listen, listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, that was culture shock to me because I went from all black area to a predominantly all white area. Mm -hmm. And I never forget my first day in, in class uh, when I entered into the school, entered into the classroom, uh, to walk into a class where I was the only black person in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, so obviously when you when you find yourself in situations like that, uh, flight uh, or, or fight comes mm -hmm. into play. Mm -hmm. And well, I chose at that point in time to assimilate in and I got along well with everybody, but it changed my perspective on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, I got a new perspective on life that, OK, now I'm seeing another culture that I was not familiar with. OK, and looking at that, that's sort of shaped things going forward. Uh, one of the first things uh, I got into was music and uh, it was uh a person that helped me with that playing the guitar and I mm -hmm. learned how to play the guitar. Uh, as I got into high school, uh, formulated a band and we, we, we mixed it up. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just an all black band, mm -hmm. okay? Right. And uh, so that was my first uh, uh, touch of inclusion and, and diversity. Uh, I would say with the band. Uh, as I got into uh, work, because uh, I found out uh, that uh, it wasn't going to work in the band, I had aspirations of being a um, composer, that's what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. and had applied to school, did the ad audition and all that, got accepted, couldn't find the money to go mm. back then. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about in the early 70s mm -hmm. uh, when that, that occurred. Uh, my, f my parents didn't have the wherewithal or the knowledge to know how to get school loans or things like that. Mm -hmm. So so that didn't happen. So I uh, wound, wound up getting into a regular secular job and my first real job was with Prudential mm -hmm. uh, Life Insurance. And uh, 
it, it, it's so funny when I when I think about how things played out, how 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 God really moved me in certain places. But I got into Prudential, which was really a learning experience for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it taught me so much. I was thrust into all kinds of people. Uh, they were a very diverse company. Oh, very diverse. I mean, I mean, you know, it was just there and uh, could had something to do because I grew up in affirmative action and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. maybe that played a part in it. I don't know. Right. But anyway, uh, that further shaped because me, because I was in that environment. Right. OK. So moving from that, going to different. Uh, I was there for about seven years, moved out of that, went into another insurance company, went out of that and went into another insurance company. But all the way through, I found myself in organizations that really championed diversity equity and, and inclusion. Um, later on, I, I, I started feeling a tug into the ministry. Uh, I guess by that time I was probably in my early 40s. Okay. And uh, so went to seminary, which would be the normal thing you would do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I watched things change even in that environment. When I first got to seminary, you had a very limited amount of uh, women mm -hmm. in ministry, mm -hmm. very limited. Mm -hmm. By the time I graduated from limited, it went to 50 percent. Wow. Women in the ministry and coming through. And I'm sure it's even more today mm -hmm. as we speak. But again, here I got to see diversity at play again and the progress and growth exactly exactly and, and all these things you know you just saw it happening and today once i finally became a, a pastor and all of that and i i see the same thing even in the ministry itself mm -hmm. that you have probably at this time it's probably a 70 30 kind of thing 70% women okay. in the ministry okay. and 30% men. The men have sort of dropped off in that. But it says something for, uh, I would say, your lead denominations, because this is kind of across the board. Okay. You know, except for the Baptist churches, they're lagging a little bit behind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but your, your other mainstream denominations, they kind of follow that. It's certainly more women in, in the ministry today. So that says something not only for uh, diversity, it says something for that. It says something for equality, mm -hmm. equity, mm -hmm. and also fairness, because now you're seeing uh, uh, women bishops uh, in the church. So again, here we go with, with God putting me in places where uh, now I'm, I'm seeing the progress of diversity mm -hmm. uh, in ministry. I think it's uh, an important thing to have diversity, equity, uh, and inclusion in ministry. Uh, um, I think um, we're better together. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, an important thing to, to think about. The Bible tells us that a three-strand cord is not easily broken. So with all of us together, all of us bringing our various and sundry talents mm -hmm. to the table, mm -hmm. I think it makes for a better organization where, wherever you are right, right. in life. It, it just makes it better. It, it, and with my sports background mm -hmm. and your knowledge of sports, mm -hmm. you know, team mm -hmm. and the team concept is a perfect example of working together, yeah. right? Yeah. If we're not working together, we're not accomplishing the goals, yeah. right? And so um, I, I'd like to think Matter of fact, I tell people all the time, I, I believe, I'm not perfect, but I believe in the spiritual foundation and the sports foundation because they both meet in the same intersection. Yeah. Right. And um, with your experience and knowledge, um, tell me how, how you think team sports plays a role, because in team sports, we have our preachers, our pastors, 
Um, we pray before games. We pray sometimes during the games and we definitely pray after the games. So um, a lot of folks who participate in sports bring that foundation with them. Mm-hmm. Right. I know the media may show a different um, side of sports and they don't focus on the athletes that do believe mm-hmm. who who follow the teachings and the scriptures. Um, but we know that they're out there. Yeah. How, 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 let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. Give me your opinion on that. Well, certainly I'm an advocate of that. And I think um, I think uh, it should be shown uh, when we think about uh, what our father forefathers uh, thought about uh, in the founding of this country. OK, everything was based on scripture and the Bible and God. And when you look at even old movies from the 40s and there was a lot of that in there. Mm-hmm. OK, uh, there must be a reason for that, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, a s- spiritual Mm-hmm. Uh, in whatever endeavor we are, I think is important to our growth, mm-hmm. you know, and not to get too deep in it, uh, Bodine, but I, I think it carries us. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's something there that we can lean on and I think it helps us. Mm-hmm. And I'm certain that athletes feel that. Mm-hmm. And certainly that, you know, any kind of athletics aside from one man sports like tennis and things like that, but you can still go over to your your seat and and uh, uh, do your diligence to your higher power, mm-hmm. if, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it is important in whatever we do, right? And certainly the team aspect. When yes. you talk about team sports, mm-hmm. okay, I think it's even more important because certainly if if we're playing. Uh, uh, um, some kind of sports event and uh, there's a challenge there and we're playing and and some team members are, are a little off their game mm-hmm. okay others can pray for that person and lift them up and lift them up right. exactly so certainly i feel a direct correlation between that and and and, and spirituality and i think it's a help Absolutely. And I think that can also carry that teachings and that format or that blueprint or that foundation Mm -hmm. can play a role in corporate. Yeah. Right. Because corporate America likes to talk about the team concept. Mm -hmm. Right. They've adopted the team concept. Mm -hmm. Right. But they may not fully understand what it takes. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the spirit of the word team. Right. Mm -hmm. They use the word team, but they don't understand the spirit of the word of the of the word team. And so that I think um, corporate America can have um, some opportunities to enhance their employee base and their executives and all, you know, the entire company. Right. Because. If we include the team concept within DEI, the bottom line is, which we know we live in a capitalistic society, Mm -hmm. the goal is to uh, improve the company's profits, right? And in order to do that, you have to have folks that are working well together. Yes. And if they're not working well together, it's going to make it very difficult to win because obviously the goal is to win for everybody, mm-hmm. not just one person. Yeah. Right? I was a defensive back, <laughs> defensive player. I know the quarterback gets all the accolades, <laughs> right? The offense yeah. gets all the accolades, but we know it takes a team in order to win the full championship. Defense has to play its role, special teams has to play its role, and offense has to play its role. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I think um, having leaders mm-hmm. and I don't just mean leaders that are out front. There are leaders to me that could be quiet leaders. Right. Yes. Um, leaders in different facets of personalities. Right. Um, so I, I would say. And let's stick to what what your expertise is being being spiritual, mm-hmm. right? The team concept within the spiritual 
um, the church, the organization of the church, the office of the church, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're the presiding elder for 16 historical AME churches in Philadelphia. Yeah. That's a huge responsibility. It is. Let's talk it about is. how you let's talk yeah. about how you get, how you keep all those personalities <laughs> moving along and working mm -hmm. together as a team. Well, I well, first of all, I, I, I preach it. That's that, that's the first thing I preached uh, being a team player. OK. And, you know, uh, giving your best for the team. Mm -hmm. OK. Even though it's a church that we're talking about, we still need everybody's participation. Mm -hmm. You can't really have any weak links, uh, even in the church, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you started talking about management styles and the same thing is in the church. Mm -hmm. You have different manager styles, you know. You have the quiet manager, you have the forceful manager, you know. But the bottom line, are you effective in whichever style that you choose to be in? OK, I would like to think I'm middle of the road. I'm not a hammer. Mm -hmm. OK, but I'm not a sponge, <laughs> I'm not a weakling, mm -hmm. that, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, you, you know, all different styles can work mm. in a team environment. Sure. OK. Sure. And, and I believe that's why we call different managerial uh, styles, mm -hmm. you know. So in, in my team, OK. I, I, I push that we are the mother district, mm -hmm. okay? And so whatever things we have to do, raise money, outreach to communities and things like that, we are the mother, we are the first, we are the beginning, okay? All right, we are that team, mm -hmm. okay? So there's certain things that we're called upon to do that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And as a team player, you do some things sometimes that maybe I don't 100 percent agree on, but I do it for the team. For the team. I do it for the team. And that's how I try to get uh, my point across to the 16 churches that I oversee. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I have a, a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. What are you hopeful for? in the future regarding this conversation that we're having about diversity, equity, and inclusion. You touched base on it a little bit about the growth mm -hmm. in the genders, mm -hmm. the women and their participation, um, the lack thereof of, or a slower growth of men. Um, I mean, there's lots of room to improve, yeah. right? Yeah, I, you know, you know, Bodine, I, I would like to see, um, let me back up. When we look at the the name of our denomination, OK, uh, African Methodist, Methodist Episcopal, Episcopal Church, church. Mm -hmm. some people think, well, then that's that's just a black church. Mm. And it's not just a black church. It was founded by black people, mm -hmm. but it's not exclusive mm -hmm. to black people. Mm -hmm. OK, I would like to see when we talk about inclusion that maybe we get more Hispanics mm -hmm. that are part of the church. Sure. We have some white in the church, okay. but you know, Asians, mm -hmm. I don't see any of them in the church. Mm -hmm. I do see some Hispanics, but I would like to see that increase mm -hmm. and that we don't just look at that name and say, well, that's an African church. No, first of all, it's Christ church, <laughs> right. number one, right. and it's open to everyone. I have a funny story quickly to share with you. Mm -hmm. A good friend of mine I've known for a long time, we were talking about the HBCU experience. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. by, from knowing me and reading my book, I began my career at the oldest HBCU right. in the country, Cheney University, before I transferred uh, to Villanova. And I was talking about the HBCU experience and he said to me, um, good friend that I've known for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, white people don't go to HBCUs. And I went, are you kidding me? <laughs> you're, you're kidding, right? He said, no. He goes, why would a black school let white people in their school? I said, hold on. 
just because back in the day, and I don't like being negative, but it, you know, let's talk about the facts. Right. Just because back in the day, predominantly white institutions didn't allow people of color to attend or apply to get in their school, doesn't mean black schools did the same mm-hmm. thing. Maybe you assumed because it was a black school, they wouldn't allow. Whatever it is, you're wrong. There are plenty HBCUs, and the reason we were talking about it is because of Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. If you watch when Deion Sanders was coaching at that HBCU, he had white players on his team. Yeah. And I said to I said to my buddy, I said, listen, for for white parents out there who kids aren't getting the opportunity to go and play at a PWI, meaning they have to sit and wait for their turn because there's so many there, consider the HBCU opportunity because if they're good enough to play, a coach is going to play them. You, you know, uh, so, so I say all that to say, <laughs> folks, if you're, if you're looking for a place to worship, there are other opportunities other than the specific religion that you may be brought up yes. in. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I do have, uh, on my district, I do have a white pastor, mm-hmm. and she does a marvelous job, fantastic job. In fact, she was just honored uh, preaching at one of our major uh, meetings. So, you know. Uh, to hear that <laughs> from him, you know, <clears throat> it just shows me uh, that there's still these misconceptions that are out there and that we we still are limiting ourselves. There's know? there's definitely room to grow. And, and like I say, I took that opportunity to educate him and and, and uh, it ended in a positive way. Mm-hmm. And, but it wasn't a negative conversation. It was just that he didn't realize. He, didn't yeah. he just didn't know that yeah. there were there were kids who saw the opportunity and said, I want to just go play. It doesn't matter uh, where it is. It's not about legacy. Mm -hmm. It's not about affirmative action. It's about the kid says, a coach says, listen, son, you have an opportunity to play now versus going to say Penn, and I'll use Penn State because we love blue and white, right? (laughs) Um, And it's a part of our state. Uh, instead of going to Penn State and waiting for that junior or sophomore to graduate, right? You have an opportunity to compete for a starting job or be in the rotation right now. And kids are taking advantage of that by going to HBCUs because they see the value in that experience. They see the value in diversity. Mm -hmm. They see the value in the education. Right. Exactly. Most people assume I left Cheney because I was unhappy. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I left Cheney because I saw an opportunity to step up from Division two to Division one double A. That was, you know, I grew up in the South where, you know, football is a second religion. (laughs) (laughs) Forgive me. Yeah. Right. But um, that was a better opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, there are opportunities for everybody to improve enhance themselves, their community, and everything that they do. Does that make sense? Exactly. While you're telling that story, I'm I'm thinking back in in the the 70s uh, when Bear Bryant was coach Mm. of Alabama, Mm -hmm. and he had to come to the realization that he needed to diversify. Mm -hmm. He wanted to keep on winning because now some people that other schools that he might have just be mm-hmm. outright, mm-hmm. you know, have become more competitive mm-hmm. because of their diversity mm-hmm. that they have. Mm-hmm. And he had to make that change himself. And I'm familiar with the story yeah. as a football player. <laughs> For those who aren't familiar with yeah. the story, uh, feel free to look it up. Uh, Alabama versus USC, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. Um, and he, he learned quite a bit yeah. um, again in that game. So as we wrap up, um, I, you know, I, I liked your, your closing remarks. And what I'll say is we don't have all the answers, mm. but we are going to endeavor to hear and listen and learn as much as possible. Right. In order to 
po- have a positive effect regarding the conversation of DEI. What would be your, your closing remarks? I, I would say whatever our organization is, uh, be it corporate, be it religious, be it athletics, all three have one common thread. Mm-hmm. They want to put their best product out. Correct. And you do that by diversification. You do that with the team concept of whatever differences are out there in diversity, that they bring the, to the table something that can enhance what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my hope uh, for all these different endeavors I just mentioned, mentioned corporate ministry, athletics, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. okay, you will do better. You will have a wider appeal. You will enjoy more profits by diversifying. Thank you. That's a great one. Well, listen, we've come to the end of the program. I want to say thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in to Blueprints. I want to thank our guest, Presiding Elder Smith, for being our guest today. We look forward to seeing you soon.